welcome back everybody. Now it's time for our grassroots citizen panel and joining me in studio she did previously is comedian and host of the Showtime special Not Skinny Not Blonde, Monique Marvez. Good to be here. How you doing Monique? Great. All right. Also in studio as he often is, is legal analyst, criminal defense attorney and self-described further to the left than President Obama, Alan Bloom. Alan, good to see you. Nice to be here. Still not skinny and still not blonde. There I am. <laughs> You're pretty slender. Uh, yeah, good shape, Alan. And joining us from Washington, D.C., and he's not skinny and he's not blonde. Well, he's not fat, though. Is uh, Kevin Martin of Project 21. Kevin, good to see you. Yeah, you're right. Not skinny, not blonde, and uh, <laughs> not fat either. But <laughs> somewhere in between. <laughs> somewhere in between. Well, that's a good thing. All right. First yeah. topic of the day is: it appears that there are more there are more uh, groups turning out, emerging, of of radical Islamic ideology, uh, jihadist groups, in addition to ISIS. One such one is called uh, Khorasan, mm -hmm. and it begs the question. We'll start with you, Monique Marvez. Should we not should we not be fighting the ideology worldwide as opposed to picking this little group in, in Iraq and then going out and find another group somewhere else? It's the ideology which is dangerous to America, dangerous to the world, not these splinter groups. Well, I'm, I'm not going to have a good answer for you. Let me start with that because I, there's, there's two or three things converging all in the same place. Number one is that I think that because of social media, Al Jazeera, I think that all of these groups are like, well, this guy got attention. What do I have to do to get attention? And I think it's a weird thing of like everybody wants to be famous, like Kim Jong Il loves Elvis. I really do. I think there's a certain level of notoriety. And as long as we live in a society that congratulates people for being more notorious than victorious, then, then we're going to keep getting people coming forward more than ever before because they like the attention. Right. And how do you deal with them without shining the spotlight on them? Yeah, in the NFL, and this is a bad time to be bringing up anything about the NFL and right. violence, but in the NFL, they, somebody jumps on in the middle of the field, they won't show that going on. They, right. won't, they won't, because... A of, fan, if a fan runs out. Yeah, somebody, it, it engrandizes uh, the situation. Yeah, if a fan jumps on there and so forth. Uh, w where do you draw that line? It's a very tough situation that I think one of the, the most effective things that was done after 9-11 was not just the horrific loss of those two buildings and the thousands of people who died. It was the billions of dollars that forced our country to turn and spend on dealing with all of those issues. And so it's almost as if when we pay attention to it and they, they get that checkbook and they get that spending, um, it, it really creates a problem right there. On the other hand, there are certain times there's no question that certain things are horrifically being done and you have to respond to it. All right, let's go to Kevin Martin. By the way, I mispronounced the name of that group. It's Coruscant. Coruscant. Uh, let's go to Kevin Martin. What's your take on all this, Kevin? Cor whether it be Coruscant, whether it be Boko Haram, whether it be Al-Qaeda, whether it be uh, militants, the, the point of the matter is that Monique made it very, a very good statement. These groups want notoriety. After 9-11, this was the most successful strike on the United States since Pearl Harbor. Okay, so these groups it figured that Al-Qaeda could do it. And believe me, ISIS and all these other groups think Al-Qaeda didn't do enough. Okay, so what they're basically saying is, we're going to do it bigger and better. And whether they call themselves uh, Al-Shabaaz, uh, al Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda, this is a worldwide issue. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know this thing. Let's, let's cut to the chase. We cannot, we cannot contract our national defense out to a bunch of, quote, unquote, moderates. Okay, they are only there for one reason, one reason only, to fulfill their ideology. Once their ideology is fulfilled, they could care less about the United States. And President Obama is going to find this out with his asinine plan of arming these, quote, unquote, moderates in Syria. Yeah, All right. who's, who are you going to give them? The, uh, you know, when the Iraq was going against Iran, one time we were giving weapons to Iraq, and then that was being used against us when, uh, by them, and then we uh, funded and uh, supported uh, Iran when they were doing it. So this kind of who do you know is your friend at what point and next time, next week, that's your enemy. The, there's a bigger problem, though, Rick. If you try to deal with this on a systemic level, if you try to deal with it not an individual and not say let's fund this group and fund that group, and you really try to make a change in, in it, then you're... We don't like to spend money in doing that. It's a hard thing to yeah, do. Kevin Martin wants to weigh in. Kevin, sure. what, what do you, it looks like you, you took exception to Ellen's comment that, wait a minute, uh, we, we have armed enemies, if you will, and they've come back to, to haunt us. 
Yeah, and, and you know what they always say, that old proverb, the enemy of my enemy is also my friend? Okay, I, I don't believe that arming any of these groups is going... We, we, this is how ISIS even came. First of all, it was known as the Islamic State of Iran. Pretty much, we beat them into the ground in 2006. Okay, then all of a sudden, these moderates popped up in Syria against uh, Assad. So we go in there and we arm them. Okay, and then what happened? They took most of the weapons, most of the funding, and branched out and became this new group called ISIS in 2008 or, or, or 2010. Why are we still using that plan? Why are we going to use that same plan again? We just passed a bunch of crap through our house and Senate to say, let's arm these moderates. Who the heck are these moderates? Right. Who are these moderates? I've never heard of a, of a moderate in my life, a Muslim moderate in my life. You know, okay. In, in who are they? Who picks and who picks and chooses this stuff? I don't know. Monique, we're down in less than thirty seconds in a segment. I want, I want you to I want to ask you a question. It's kind sure. of related to what Kevin just said. You know, we're about to arm these Syrian rebels. Who are they? We've had on uh, several counterterrorism experts on the show in the last week, and their one theme that they have is that America, whether it's Bush or, or President Obama, but they were focusing. That, that was their comment. Either either administration, what we lack today is strategic leadership and they fear that arming uh, rebels in Syria shows a lack of strategic thinking. Well, well here's the thing nobody wants to be unpopular. I do USO tours and I'm going to tell you something about America. When we go in and get something started, we don't finish and we don't leave. Yeah. And maybe that's not a popular thing to say, but I've been to Korea. I've been to Japan. I've been to Iran. I've been boots on the ground entertaining and talking to the young men who went over there thinking a specific thing was going on only to get over there to find out that's not what's going on. So I think the first thing we have to do is get real honest with the public well, in, in some fashion. We have Charlie's to leave it right there. Okay. I'm sorry, Ellen. We'll sure. leave it right there in the interest of time, but we'll continue unless you have your comment on the other side of the break. Sure. We'll continue with the grassroots panel right after this.